Hello and welcome to another Tech Distractions video. In this one we'll be checking out an Asus motherboard and Intel CPU combination from the early 2000s and seeing how it performs under Windows 98 and MS-DOS benchmarks and gaming. This motherboard is the Asus P4SGL-VM, released around June of 2002. It uses the Micro ATX form factor and is compatible with the Intel Socket 478 processor and DDR memory up to 2GB. For expansion we've got three PCI slots, two IDE channels and one floppy drive channel. On the rear we've got a PS2 keyboard and mouse, two USB 1.1 ports, a serial port, parallel port, VGA, game port and audio jacks. According to an old archive price list from about January 2003, we can see this motherboard retailed for around 130 Australian dollars. SIS dominated the lower end of the price lists and were often referred to as all-in-one motherboards due to the integrated video, sound and other components. The P4SGL-VM used the SIS 650GL chipset. The 650 chipset was released in September 2001 and was commonly found on these low-end budget desktop and laptop motherboards. On the desktop, it supported Celeron and Pentium 4 chips with a 400MHz frontside bus. It did not support hyperthreading. It could support up to 3GB of DDR266 RAM, but this motherboard only supported 2GB. While the chipset supported AGP 4x graphics, the GL variant did not come with an external slot and relied on the integrated graphics. As a result, we're dealing with the SIS Real 256 graphics based on the SIS 315 core. SIS released only a small amount of discrete 2D, 3D chipsets during the late 90s to early 2000s. Most of these were relegated to the very bottom end of the market in both price and performance. Starting out in 1997, the 6326 was a multimedia focus card with some versions having additional hardware embedded to decode MPEG-2 or DVD playback. It had support for Direct3D5 and it had limited to no OpenGL supporting games and often had very, very low frame rates. During 1999, SIS released a second generation 2D 3D engine called the 300, featuring a new 128-bit engine, Direct 3D 6.0 and OpenGL 1.1. It was a significant jump in performance over the 6326 and the iGPU was found on the Socket 7 platform. A year later, the 305 was released and it was a cut-down version of the 300 with slower memory, a 64-bit bus and about a third of the memory bandwidth. The iGPU was found on many Intel boards ranging up from slot 1 all the way up to Socket 478. It's important to note that when it comes to the iGPU, SIS only used the 64-bit memory bus. 128-bit versions were only applicable to some AMD chipsets and Intel versions supported the embedded graphics module, which I'm not sure I've seen of in the 300 series. 2001 brought a second incarnation of the 300 series, the 315 and 315E. SIS seemed proud of the new 256-bit engine, but there seemed to be little to no difference between it and the old version. Performance was far behind the competition, and many of the reviews at the time were not very impressed. The 315-based iGPU was a confusing affair, with it being called SIS 315, Real 256, Real 256E, and Mirage. The latter is not to be confused with the next generation Mirage 1, which would be introduced with the 330 chipset in 2004. Essentially there wasn't much difference between this and the earlier 300 series, and the spread of board and processor generations meant the iGPU series could be found paired with everything from a Socket 7 right up to a Socket 775 based core duo. SIS iterated and dragged out the 2D 3D engine of the 300 and 315 iGPU for far too long, and by the time 2001 rolled around it was almost useless for anything other than basic office tasks. The gaming side simply couldn't keep up, it lacked support for hardware based TNL, newer Direct 3D standards and was left behind. The discrete cards didn't fare much better either, but at least you could rip them out and upgrade to a GeForce 4 and get some gaming action. With the iGPUs you're often stuck because many manufacturers remove the AGP slot from the motherboard, just as you see on the motherboard in this video. Worse still, SIS kept incarnations of this iGPU in circulation until about 2007. Yikes. No wonder these iGPUs would often give people some sort of horrible flashback rather than nostalgia. In this build we're using the Intel Pentium 4 CPU. This one is a 2GHz variant based on the 130nm Northwood architecture released in early 2002 and it was one of the first ones on Socket 478. At the time its main competitor was the Socket A based AMD Athlon XP2000 Plus, but it had to also compete with the aging but popular Pentium 3 Twilaton chips which were dropping in price and still giving good performance. So here's the build on my trusty ATX frame. It's got one single stick of 512MB of DDR memory and for storage I'm using a SATA SSD connected via a generic AliExpress IDE to SATA converter. These seem to work alright for me, but your mileage may vary. 
I've also installed a PCI sound card, the ESS Solo One, which is featured heavily on this channel. It gives us reliable DOS performance for both FM and FX. Here we are booted into Windows, and we're going to take a look at Everest. As you can see, the operating system detected is Windows 98 SE. The memory being reported is 448 megabytes, and this is due to the integrated graphics sharing it. It's picked up my monitor, the LG L1510S, which is also from 2003. As I scroll around, you can see the various specifications of the motherboard and the CPU, most of which I've already discussed. Everest is a very handy tool to use, especially on laptops where opening up and inspecting components can be time consuming. Checking out the synthetic benchmarks now, and first up is CPU Z Vintage Edition. Processor score is 2118.9, and floating point is 6709.1. Moving on to 3D Mark 99, we begin to see the first problem with the SIS integrated graphics VSync. I simply couldn't find a way to turn it off, even with trusty old power strip. We bump up against the monitor's 75Hz refresh rate a few times throughout the run. The end result is a score of 6247 3D marks, which is still pretty decent for a Windows 98 era gaming. VSync aside, we are getting some OK results here. The SIS iGPU will play these earlier games at a lower resolution, at a decent frame rate. For more demanding titles like Trackmania Nations, we do start to see the limits. Now let's boot up to MS-DOS and have a look at the 2D performance of the SIS iGPU. Under Phil's DOSBench we see some high scores thanks to the Pentium 4 and the VGA Boost utility. 
Luckily the 2D performance of the SIS iGPU is pretty good and we don't have those vSync issues like we do under Windows. And while it's good to see some big numbers here, it's also useful to know that this CPU can be slowed down with utilities such as CPU speed. The P4 has got cache and throttle control so you should be able to get some of those trickier 386 and 486 era games to run. And speaking of games...
So there we have it. I must admit, I was a little surprised with this project. With the relatively quick Pentium 4 and the SIS 315 based Real 256i GPU, you can get reasonable graphics performance under Windows 98. Add in a decent PCI sound card like the ESS Solo 1, and you have yourself a capable DOS gaming experience as well. While I concede this is technically XP era hardware, and it would deliver a below average experience at the time, from a retro point of view, it's not too bad. Well anyway, that about wraps it up for this one. If you're still here watching, thank you. I'll link a few of my other SIS iGPU videos here. Feel free to check them out. I look forward to seeing you again in 2024. Bye for now.